Hi, my name is Jason Buffington. I'm a senior technical product manager in the Storage Solutions team at Microsoft, focusing on file services, stored server appliances, and of course, System Center Data Protection Manager 2007. So let's discuss what's new in Data Protection Manager 2007 with Service Pack 1 for protecting virtualized environments. Here we can see a virtualization host, and I've got four virtual machines running on the inside. Three of them happen to be Windows, running different kinds of line of business applications. One of them is running a non-Windows based OS. For the most part, the guidance you see here applies equally to Windows Server 2008, including Hyper-V, the Microsoft Hyper-V Server, and Microsoft Virtual Server 2005 R2. When protecting environments, we have two different methods based on whether or not the guest operating system being protected is a VSS or a non-VSS capable guest. For any guest, operating system or application that is not internally VSS capable, which might include variants of Linux, Windows NT4, and Windows 2000, as well as perhaps line of business applications that may not have a VSS writer, in these cases we treat them all as non-VSS based guests. To protect these style machines, we will hibernate the machine when the backup is scheduled to go off. By hibernating it, we're able to secure what was in the memory and in the CPU of those virtual machines and dump them to a flat file. It takes only a few minutes to hibernate the machine down. Once the machine is down, we simply snap it using Volume Shadow Copy Services, and then we can immediately resume it back online again. It's going to basically feel like you had a momentary interruption in service. This already is superior to how most other backup platforms address the protection of virtualized guests. There are actually two other methods that some of the other legacy approaches use. One of them uses a SAN to snap the LUN that those virtual machines are under, then remounts that LUN under another head, and then uses a third-party backup product in order to try to back it up from there. DPM 2007 with Service Pack 1 does not require a SAN, does not require third-party backups in order to do this, and in fact can protect the entire solution including using DPM on the virtualization host itself. A secondary legacy method for protecting these kinds of machines follows something similar to what you see here. It hibernates the machine, but the legacy approach often will back up the entire machine while it's in that hibernated or down state, and then brings the machine back online when we're done. The challenge is that if you have multiple, multiple gigs of virtual machines, those machines can be down for a while. Note here that in DPM 2007 SP1, we simply bring it down, snap it, and bring it back up again. Once it comes back online, because we have a frozen snap, we are then free to do the block level checksum comparisons and confirm which blocks have changed since our last point in time of that VHD set. And then we send just those changed blocks across the way. Now, of course, all of this still requires a momentary power of downtime from these non-VSS capable guests. So, the better solution is for using VSS-based guest operating systems. In this case, we can see a Windows Server 2003 machine or SQL Server 2005 as a line of business application. When DPM 2007 attempts to protect this guest from the host without an agent on the inside, will contact the VSS writer of the virtualization host. Again, this applies equally to Virtual Server 2005 R2, Microsoft Hyper-V Server, as well as Windows Server 2008 with Hyper-V. In all cases, we reach to the DPM agent which is running strictly on the, on the virtualization host. We request to protect that particular guest, at which point the integration components of Hyper-V or the virtual machine additions of virtual server do what's called a referential VSS query, which essentially means that while we're talking to the outside of the host, it instructs any VSS writers on the inside of the guest operating system. So SQL Server's VSS writer ensures that the database is consistent. Then the Windows Server VSS writer for the file system ensures that NTFS is consistent on the inside of the guest operating systems. Only when the guest data is consistent and clean does the hypervisor then provide us an a available copy to back up from the host. So in effect, the inside is clean before we get it from the outside.
Something key to note here is there is no downtime requirement for this process. We're using that referential or recursive VSS level in order to ensure the consistency of the data without having to do hibernation. And the only requirements on the inside of the guest operating system is either using the virtual server VM additions or the Hyper-V integration components. And you're protecting from the host. You're doing it with no downtime, no bouncing, and without having to pay for and deploy agents to each of the guest operating systems. So then the question comes, well, why wouldn't I always do that? Why wouldn't I always protect just from the host? It'll save me licensing on my guests. That's true, but let's talk about that in detail. When you protect the virtualized guests from the host, you're protecting the entire machine. You're protecting the entire VHD kit. You do not have the ability to see inside of that guest operating system, so you, there is no data selectability or granularity either during protection or restore. You're protecting or recovering the entire machine as a logical unit. Now, aside from that, though, you do get some pretty cool benefits, including the ability to do bare metal recovery of all these virtual machines. Because, in effect, if you were to lose a given machine, DPM could restore that, that VM on any other virtualization host in your environment. Effectively, bare metal. It also means you can protect the entire set of virtualized machines using a single DPM agent on the host. All guests are protected by that. It allows you to protect non-Windows-based servers or just simply older editions of Windows that aren't capable of being protected by DPM 2007 natively. And lastly, you can use a single DPML agent on the host for deploying that. In contrast to that, you might choose to put the DPM agent inside the guest. If you do that, you'll be able to select which data you protect and recover. You can select individual SQL databases, SharePoint farms, exchange storage groups, individual file sets, etc. In fact, this is no different than protecting a physical server. However, it does mean that you will be purchasing and deploying a DPM agent for each guest operating system. Good news is that you can use them both together. On the diagram on the bottom part of the screen, we see that for those line of business VSS capable applications and operating systems that are able to run a DPM agent on the inside, feel free to do that. Put a DPM agent on the inside and that way you can protect individual databases and restore just those databases when you need them. You can also, on that same platform, run the DPM agent on the host, which allows you to protect the non-Windows based OS's or earlier Windows based OS's, as well as being able to protect the outside of that line of business app so you can retire the entire machine at the same time. One key benefit, which is important to note, is if you acquire your data protection management license or your DPMLs through the System Center Management Suite or SMSE. The SMSE is a bundle, so it includes the DPML. It also includes an OML for Operations Manager, a CML for Configuration Manager, and a VMML for Virtual Machine Manager. Interestingly, one of the additional benefits of the suite over purchasing the DPML for your virtualization host on its own is free use rights for the guests up to the amount of instances supported by the OS. Meaning, if you're using standard and you have Windows Server which allows for one host OS and then one instance in a guest versus Enterprise which allows for multiple instances versus Data Center which allows for an unlimited number of guests to whatever licensing SKU you have for the Windows OS by purchasing a System Center Management Suite your DPML extends the same use rights. You can put DPMLs inside of all of your guests up to that limit with no additional charge. The key question you need to ask yourself when selecting whether to protect from the host or whether to protect from the guest is what level of restore granularity that you require. If you'd like to be able to restore individual databases or simply protect individual databases, you'll do that by, by putting a DPM agent inside the guest itself. In this case, in the DPM UI, you would see the SQL Server, and you'll see each instance of SQL and the databases residing underneath those, and you'll simply select those individual databases, no differently than if that SQL Server was a physical box. If you see a virtualization host and open it up, you'll see the host configuration for the virtualization platform itself, as well as each guest operating system as a single object to be protected or not as a whole.